Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 11, eight, and six. In today's video, I am bringing you three books that Source Books very kindly sent me. And these were actually sent to me a few months ago in honor of Earth Day. But I personally think every day is Earth Day and I try to read environmentally uh, conscious books to my children all year long. So I hope that this is timely for you guys because I think every day really is Earth Day truly in my heart. Um, these books are wonderful. I love the books that Source Books uh, publishes because they are so engaging. So this is What Does It Mean to Be Green? And I'm just gonna show you the illustrations. I love that the books that they make often have different um, types of illustrations. They're not all like one note. They also are very good for children of different ages. So they don't really dumb down the concept, which I really appreciate. So, so yeah. here I loved this book. This is What Does It Mean to Be Green? Does it mean being good with plants? No, that's good because I am not good with plants. I try, but I'm not. Does it mean feeling sick in the car? No. Does it mean looking like a frog, a pickle, or an alien? No. So yeah. being green means turning the lights on in your home only when you need them eating foods grown locally or even from your own garden. And it goes through a whole variety of different ways that we can be environmentally conscious and help the world that we live in. And I really love that it talks about things that children can understand, like drawing on both sides of a paper or giving your clothes away to someone uh, who is smaller than you, wearing your pajamas one more time before you wash them. And these are all things that I've tried to teach my kids, but I love that it's in a book now where they can see like, oh, this is not just a crazy thing their mom is saying. I really love this book by Rana Diorio and illustrated by Chris Blair. Um, what does it mean to be green? And then there is A Dolphin's Wish, written by an additional resource for what does it mean to be green is made by littlepicklepress.com and you can actually get lesson plans for kindergarten through third grade for that book and the lesson plans are excellent they include projects as well as activities like focal activities for that project extension activities and community projects so you have objectives backgrounds you have additional resources uh, for the students to look at, including coloring pages and different books. It clearly tells you what the reading levels are for those um, resources. So if you are interested in looking up an additional uh, resource to flesh out lessons from this book, this is a nice place to look at littlepicklepress.com. And then there is A Dolphin's Wish, and this is written by Trevor McCurdy and illustrated by Cinzia Battistel. Um, this is actually a gorgeous book as well. It is rated for ages four and up. Personally, I think um, picture books can be read to any age uh, from zero to 99 or over. Um, this one has lovely, almost three-dimensional illustrations here where you have, my dad can tell a wicked story of fearsome sharks and brave John Dory. He tells me tales of mighty whales and entire nations of weird crustaceans. So I love the rhyme pattern in this book. It, this one talks about ocean pollution and plastic and what we can do to minimize our contribution um, to ocean waste. And uh, it talks about the dangers that plastics present to ocean animals and why we want the rivers and lakes to be as um, clean as possible. So... So it ends the book with a whole list of things that we can do to actually stop uh, the pollution of the oceans, like stopping single-use plastics and plastic straws, bamboo instead of plastic for toothbrushes, um, swapping old toys, picking up litter. It explains how much and how plastic gets into the oceans. It also talks about what the harm is that actually is caused and how long that type of garbage will stay in the ocean. Um, it has a little vocab or glossary page where it talks about different things like what's the difference between microbeads and microplastics, garbage patches, what does biodegradable actually mean, what are ghost nets. Uh, this was one of those books that I think is excellent to read to your whole family because it really has a cute story that talks to the younger kids, but it presents real factual information that's really interesting to your older kids as well. So this is one of those read alouds that keeps everybody um, entertained and is actually uh, teaching us something as well. Uh, last but not least is Lobster Garden. Okay, 
Could you not love Lobster Garden more? Like, just say Lobster Garden. Speak out against pollution with a wicked awesome Boston accent. Exactly. So you've got Allie Bryden and Egg Keller as the authors. And the pictures are by Egg, Kel Egg Keller as well. So Lobster Garden has some of the best illustrations I've seen recently. I love this type of watery oil resist type of pastel kind of illustration. It's, it's like one of my favorite types of children's illustration. Um, Walter is a really proud lobster with his style straight out of Crustaceans Illustrated and his garden is a blooming paradise. It has all sorts of wonderful animal um, and plant life and he wants to win the Swell Gardens contest, but his obnoxious neighbor Milton always wins it. And unfortunately, just as he's like getting ready to win this year, he has a giant piece of garbage in the form of like a tire or a wheel fall into his garden. And he thinks that Milton is, is sabotaging him. And Milton, on the other hand, thinks that, that Walter is sabotaging him as all this garbage fills up their gardens. And the garbage mountain like tumbles into their gardens and they finally figure out like that they need to look elsewhere to see where this is coming from. And they go to the surface and they find out that all of this garden is coming from these boats that are dumping garbage and surface garbage. And they try to figure out how to clean up their gardens together, uh, which is awesome. And so they just fix their problem and they write to the boat chowderhead hey chowderheads enough with the garbage and then they have a beautiful garden again so just like the last book that i showed you this book also has a lot of information about exactly what's going on with our oceans and why we should care about what's going on with garbage and and reducing our plastic pollution for the oceans in particular. So it gives students a, an idea of what they can do like to help um, clean the oceans, like don't pour anything but water down the drain, learn about the state of our oceans, recycle the plastic you use. It also has a huge glossary that they give you in Boston accent, which is awesome, like a Boston haba, chowda, and then you have a reference list as well of both uh, internet videos and books that you can look up. So I really liked Lobster Garden, A Dolphin's Wish, and What Does It Mean to Be Green? Like I said, every single day should be Earth and Ocean Day for us. And I hope that you will give these books a look. I will link them in the description box down below for you. As always, I appreciate it when you use any of my affiliate links. It really does help me receive more products for review. It lets companies know that I have sent people their way. And it just also makes me, you know, excited to do this <laughs> review process for you guys. So I appreciate it. As always, I know your time is valuable. Thank you so much for spending some of it with me and I wish you the very best day.